and he was kind of sketched out by what he found. So. Oh, you went really echoey. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm <laughs> echoing too. How do I fix that? Oh, it's like it's like Google Hangout echo. Is it echoing for you too? I hear echoing. Does anybody else hear echoing? Kim? It sounds it's good. good. Yeah. Oh, I hear myself, yeah. Life Ooh. with baby hears echoing. Hmm. Well, okay. What you need to know is if you're on the right hand side looking at all the messages, if you have a question to ask, you want to do a Slack queue. I'll do a quick demo for you. This is the question format. All right. And what that will do is it'll make sure that we don't miss your question as everything scrolls through. Um, if you like something somebody's saying, you want to click on the two hands going, woo, props. Like if you guys want to click on mine now, just so you get it. Or click on mine. You can <laughs> click on mine. Or, or mine. Right did, oh, yeah, yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're getting hands. Nobody's okay. clicking on mine, though. I'm really sad. No, you're pointing Thank the wrong you. way. Point to the other corner. I know. But I'm pointing opposite. to mine. No, not on mine. Maybe because we're turned. <laughs> okay, never mind. All right, we're still waiting for Paula. Maybe she's having technical difficulties, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and do an intro of myself and Julie, and then we'll let Kimberly introduce herself and Paula when, when she comes online. So I'm Phaedra. I'm a blogger at ultimatephaedra.com. You may not know this about me, but I used to work in the travel industry. I worked for almost four years back in the day when you actually... Your mic's really messed up all of a sudden. Mine is? Yeah. I, it does not messed up for me. Okay, try talking. Oh, you're oh, I heard too. too. Yeah. Yeah. That's way, way worse. Earphones. Weird. Gotta use the earphones. I've got mine in. Nothing else yeah. on. Uh, so, that's okay. You you do technical difficulties yeah, and uh, you're fine. I'll Just jump to me. back in. You were fine. It was better. Yeah. Sorry, guys. We don't normally have this many technical difficulties. Let's see. Let me try that. All right. Paula's having trouble dialing. No, you need your mic in, Phaedra. Anyway, guys, I'm Julie, and I uh, am at julienoll.com and www.threechickensinaboat.com. I'm a blogger and a strategist. Uh, I do, uh, you know, uh, blog outreach on my personal blog. I'm also the publisher of Blunt Moms, which is a collaborative site. I do strategy and development through my business, and I do a lot of blog mentorships, which is kind of how I look at these blabs, where we get the chance to come on air and talk to you uh, influencers uh, or those who want to be bloggers. And... Uh, uh, answer questions and provide solutions and ideas and advice. Over to you, Phaedra. <laughs> well, Paula's having technical di difficulties. I think we're all having technical difficulties. Um, I hope everybody brought wine. I I wasn't sure what the I yeah. Uh, oh, I have <laughs> Stella cider. My husband cider works. Yeah. Cider works. <laughs> all right. Uh, what well, we, we might just be a threesome this tonight. <laughs> can't Paula can't out. figure it out. I don't know. Does she have her webcam on? That's a good question. It doesn't sound quite as good as yours. I should have had a better elevator pitch, I guess. I'm all about helping families get outside, create memories together, encouraging them with tips and ideas, destinations. Well, see, oh, that's sorry. good. That I works. know. I was like, wait, I should give my elevator pitch, I guess. Sorry. But you are a real live travel blogger. I am. I do yeah. travel blog. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So talk to us about how that started. So you said, I would like to be a travel blogger. And then all of a sudden. Yes. Everything just came to me. <laughs> <laughs> I went to France. and Germany. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, my husband, actually, I would have friends that would always come to me and say, hey, we want to go here. or We want to do this. So what should we do? And just kept coming, kept coming. And my husband finally said, you know, there's this thing called blogging and it's kind of big now. So why don't you start a blog and share all that information with everyone out there and make a career out of it? And I said, okay, sounds good. And then just taught myself from the ground up. 
And travel blogging is definitely different. I also, so my goal was to do travel blogging, but we don't travel, we're not a nomadic family. So we still live at home and go to school and everything here. So we're not traveling that often. And I realized that as a travel blogger, I needed to make content. And so then I started adding a little bit of the lifestyle focus in there, uh, just so I would have more content to write about. But it comes down to travel blogging. That's my goal. That's my desire. Getting to the point where I can monetize that is where I'm at now. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And see, Phaedra, I think you're a travel blogger. Um, you know, travel, oh God, the echo's really bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Traveling is a hobby of mine. Like I said, I worked in the travel industry and I joined not for the money, but because I wanted to be able to travel and I couldn't afford it. So I did that and took a lot of great trips and realized it's better to make money and just pay for your travel than to work. That's kind of an interesting thing to think about when it comes to travel blogging, because I think a lot of people think these people are getting paid to travel all over the world. And that's not necessarily the case. So what I do in terms of traveling is whenever I have the opportunity to go somewhere, whether it's on my own vacation, my own dime, or maybe I'm doing a press trip for something completely unrelated to the destination where I'm going, I will also turn that into a travel piece on my blog. And I use Periscope for that a lot too, because I like to bring people along with me and help them experience things that they don't otherwise get a chance to do. Yeah. And I wa I watched your Periscopes from your trip last week to um, beaches, right? For That was beaches, an awesome trip. Beaches that was a great trip. That was an awesome trip. I was there too. That was Yeah, great. I was not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe next year. Uh, but I felt it was there was value to the periscopes that you were offering because you were saying, you know, this is the walk to the beach, these are the restaurants, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, but you know, it was a little tough because you don't always know what people want to see. Like, do they want to see a hotel? Do they want to see yeah. another view of the beach? Mm -hmm. um, I, I just try to show people if they haven't been there what they might expect, for, not just for the destination, but really for the resort. Because I thought right. that was the best first person view that I could give. Yeah, that's good. I think that's one opportunity that Periscope has where, because um, people can look at websites, you can look at reviews, you can even read blog posts, but Periscope's kind of cool in that it is a firsthand experience of, hey, are you looking at how I'm walking <laughs> to get to the beach? This is how far the distance is, or this is what the distance is like between the villages, or here's what it sounds like if you have a room next to the pool or whatever. Right. Yeah, I think, I mean, that has value. So, yeah. um, Phaedra, you had some questions. Do you want to work through those? I know Paula's having a really hard time getting in, um, but I think that there's still value on, in us. She's on her mobile, and maybe if she goes uh, desktop, it that might be help. easier. Yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to, since we're kind of travel people, we love travel, right? That's why we do it. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite travel destination, and why? Or maybe what place you'd love to go? haven't had a chance to yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Julie I, started? I, I wish I could say anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> What's my favorite? Anywhere? Anywhere's my favorite travel this <laughs> Outside of your house? <laughs> send me to, you know, I mean, send me 30 minutes away and I'll be happy. No, I, to me, I like to go to places where we can explore the world. We did a lot of traveling when we were younger. Um, so I do actually have travel content on my site. Um, we've been to Europe, oh God, I think like 19 times. Well, that's something um, to sneeze at. I know, but mm. it's not, I haven't written about it. Well, you should. Uh, I you know. should write about you it. Know, to that point, if you're interested in writing about travel, but you haven't had a travel opportunity, take some of the opportunities that you've had and exploit them yeah. on your blog. So for example, yes. I went to China in 2005 mm -hmm. and Back when we did have digital cameras. Yeah. I did Europe before we had digital cameras. And, oh God, that makes me sound really cool. But um, <laughs> and what I wanted to do is I wanted to show people a different side of China. So I did, yeah. like a, I, I did a series called um, Armchair Travel, where That's cool. I tried to help people experience things that they probably aren't going to see in their lifetime. And I talked about the food, uh, which you guys showed me that post very interesting experience and a tourist point of view and then a side of China that you might typically see. Um, 
So use your previous experience to talk about that on your blog as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely. And I mean, I we did a ton of travel. I lived in Australia for a year. I've been to South America, Brazil, Peru, uh, Europe, England, Ireland, Scotland, Germany, France, Andorra, Liechtenstein, Spain. Wait a minute. Who's the travel? <laughs> no, <I'm just> right. <laughs> But since we have kids, uh, I mean, we've been to the UK and stuff like that, but we haven't done a lot of great adventures with our kids. And I think as a parent, that's what I would prefer talking about. Traveling as a youth, well, just fill a backpack and grab some coin and get on a plane, right? Um, but as a parent, it's a whole different ballgame. Well, and that's that's a good point. So, Kim, maybe you want to talk about the fact uh, whether or not you are a family travel blogger, an independent travel blogger, because for me, once I had my son, I kind of stopped all travel because I got panicked, like the idea of taking a baby somewhere and car yeah. seats. And so talk yeah. about that a little. I think that happens so often. So I do have a very heavy family travel focus. Um, I also do like travel tips or destination focus because you do get sent on press trips where your family is not included. So occasionally you can have a story mind, a storyline and idea and go to that destination and write it thinking, oh, how would kids interact here? Or So you can definitely still write from a family travel aspect. But yeah, we definitely started traveling with our kids. We both lived, um, our families are stretched out. Like I'm originally from Kansas. My husband's family is in Edmonton. And then we're in Seattle now. So when we had our kids, we were just like, okay, we're not going to stop traveling. And I didn't travel much as a kid. So for my husband and I, when we got married, we started traveling. And then after three years, when we had kids, we thought, well, you just take the kids with you. It wasn't even a concept to us. <laughs> so, Such a great idea. I know. I was like, well, you just figure it out. And there weren't blogs and stuff at that time. So I don't yeah. know how I did it. But um, so, yeah, we just picked them up, took road trips up to Canada, took, you know, flights back to Kansas City to visit my family. And the kids just came along. So then pretty soon we went to Hawaii for our youngest year birthday. I was pregnant. We had another one. We went to England uh, when I was pregnant with our two-year-old. And um, so, yeah, our kids have always been along. We've never really – it definitely adjusts how you travel. Yeah. So you can do a lot less and it takes a lot more – thought about, okay, where are we going to eat? When are we going to stop? Is this in a safe place? Or how easy is it to get around? I mean, we rented a car in Cancun and had a Cadillac stroller. And that was a whole lesson on what not to do. And so you just kind of there's these little things where you definitely have to have some considerations when you add family to it. But I don't think at all that kids should that families should tra stop traveling. And my kids now are some of the best travelers because yeah. they so young and so now they just a big road trip or a flight and they just hunker go into it good yeah so now what are the opportunities for you as a parent to get these travel family travel opportunities so how does that deal <laughs> how does that deal work like that's I mean from a person who doesn't get travel ops I get sponsored ops and that kind of stuff right. does a brand just approach you and say what yeah, so most often uh, it's that I've had, sorry, we just have a dog and a kid. That's, that's um, real life, often, baby, real yeah. life, right? Uh, exactly. Most often it's been um, press trips where you're in, invited often with another group of people that you go and see the destination and they line you up and it's pretty like, pretty packed. You get up in the morning, you're going here, 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 uh, straight through finishing out after dinner, you go back to your hotel, you get up and do it again. And it's normally pretty quick. Yeah. So I have one coming up um, next week that I fly in on the 10th. And it's for Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. We're there for dinner, the day of the 11th, and then we leave the afternoon of the 12th. So they just get you in and out and you're shoved full of stuff. So yeah. that's kind of an awesome one. Uh, or I mean a popular way of doing it but when I was starting out it was more me pitching companies directly so I would say oh we're planning on going to Orlando or I'm just throwing that out there but we're going to go to Houston Texas I'm going to find a hotel that we would like to stay at that would match my readership readership or so then you contact them directly and reach out to a lot of times the convention and visitor bureaus which in you know, travel blogging language, those are called CVBs, 
So it's, I knew that. That's, Ooh, I, I did know. not know <laughs> when, when I was starting and I would hear people say, oh, the CVB there, or, oh, just contact the CVB. And I was like, okay, great. And then yeah. what is CVB? <laughs> and there's a lot of acronyms for CVB out there, but yeah. that's what it stands for, Convention Visitors Bureau. So Very how cool. social media savvy would you say these CVBs are? are? Are most of them willing and excited and able to work with bloggers in some way or influencers, I should say? I would say it's a mix. Some of them definitely know bloggers. They want to get in on it. They kind of feel like, oh, if they have the product, they, they're happy to give it with for a little bit of exposure. Um, but there's a lot of them that still are in the old journalistic style. Like I know that I've had a lot of times where you have a media request form you have to fill out. Mm. So it'll say stuff like, <gasps> hold the phone. Oh, Paul, oh, 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 you may be joining us. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's almost like a 22 hour delay of a flight, eh? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice Paula, persistence Paula. there. Well, that's a good that's point, though. Good. When you're a travel blogger, you got to roll with the punches. You got to right? roll with it. There's like, <laughs> yep, all sorts of crazy stuff. Welcome, and you never Paula. Give up. <laughs> Sorry you about that. Okay. I apologize. Because, yeah, I'm just like, well, I can see everything happening, except it just won't let me come. So I'm like, all right, I'll just wait it uh, out. Just well, you fixed it. it. It's all good. You That's were pretty good. Yes. And you got it done. It was good. It was Very good. Nice. Paula, yeah. while you have our yes. attention, why don't, why don't you give a quick uh, intro for yourself? Um, I came into social media completely unexpectedly. It's been a fantastic ride. Uh, for me, it happened through Pinterest and has now led itself to more experiential travel like we're talking about today and blogging and so forth. So you can find me at on Twitter at Coop. Paula, which is C-O-O-P-P-A-U-L-A. Um, I also have a website which kind of connects you to all my other social media platforms, but thank you so much for having me to this. I'm excited. This is my first time doing this. So Clearly. I apologize. No. <laughs> Seriously, like, you seem like such an expert. Yeah. Right. Give her yes, more props. I, Give her more props. Well, <laughs> you're doing a good job. And, and I like the <laughs> web guy. He loves the persistence, right? Yep. And that's actually a good lesson yeah. to be learned in this business because uh, no matter what you're pitching, whether it's travel or whether it's brands or whatever it is, you will get no a lot. So I, I liked hearing um, yeah. how you started out with, you know, let me let me see what's going on. I happen to be traveling here. Let me reach out. And um, and so, Paula, why don't you talk about are you generally pitching or because of your influence? Do you now have people coming to you with opportunities? I do. It's a combination of both. I think the hustle never stops. And I think dependent on as we evolve and you kind of recognize in yourself new things that are of interest, you kind of take those paths and go that way. But for me, yeah, it's a combination of both. I just did a nine day travel trip down to Nevis. Uh, working with their tourist board and then that lent itself to doing um, some work with the Marriott on St. Kitts and then stopping in even to Miami on the way home to work with a boutique hotel there That's which awful. was fantastic. It sounds terrible. I know. <laughs> you me. Why did they send you to such terrible places? That's what I never understand. I right? don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well it was it was pretty horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know so uh, let's talk about destinations for a second. So it's not all Caribbean sunshiny. Um, Kim, you were talking about, uh, it's, uh, to me, all I heard was Nowheresville, Louisiana or something. <laughs> I don't, where, where did you say you were going? Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. Okay. Which, no disrespect. I New Orleans. You're, no disrespect to anybody who out there who might be from <laughs> Jefferson Parish, but the reality is that not everything is a glamorous trip, that there are people that want to know where can I go in my own backyard or where can I do a, a close road trip or something inexpensive for the family. So they're all different types of travel. And I know some yeah, people so focus specifically on luxury, luxury travel, travel as well. So and I think that's... Yeah. Yep. I think that's what I want. I want to be the, like the luxury travel blogger. Is that is that happen? There's a lot of just there's a, make that happen. You, you, you gotta yeah. got to work on your diva qualities. I, I think, think you need to I, step I, that up. I can't wear my my chucks and bring a backpack. 
right? Well, you so, can, right? but then you, you got to play it off like you're a celebrity, I'm, I'm and you, celebrity, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm playing it yeah. down, right? <laughs> <laughs> playing yeah. it down. Well, then you need shades and a hat. Yeah, yeah so I got a hat. Life of the baby thought you said Paris, not Paris. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I would love to go to Paris. Yeah, yeah, uh, I heard Paris CBB. Yeah. If you're heard listening, Paris CBB yeah. is listening in. Here we are. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I do like wine, so. Yeah. No, <laughs> oh, <laughs> la, la, la. Uh, so we're let me. La, let, you know? Since it's 925 already, let's get to the nitty gritty, which is, are you making money as a travel blogger? And I'm not asking you to disclose how much you're making, but are you making money as a travel blogger and, and how, because I think this is a, a misconception. I, I know plenty of travel bloggers that, um, the trip itself is, is really just, that's, I don't want to yep. say compensation. Um, but you're not getting paid to attend a trip. I know a lot of people, and I know we talked about this at, at Beaches, a lot of people use this as a platform to get paying freelance travel writing gigs. gigs. So let's, you guys talk about that a little bit. For me, it definitely was a platform. Like I think it, it was the first big trip that I've really done in this capacity. So it was also about kind of proving that I could and how I would handle creating content. And then of course, just making those contacts and so forth as well. And it did give me opportunity to move into already some more work from this. So I think it's like anything. It's like, for me, I started with doing stuff that was more local, like supporting local businesses. And when the aquarium started up, kind of doing a piece for them just to show that you're kind of able to come in and take a look at something and how you write about it and photograph it and kind of share that to your audience is really important. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I haven't been paid in the traditional sense. Like, you know, you go and the, I mean, the trip itself was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And to me was payment and yeah, I think if you kind of keep your ears to the ground, it allows you to meet other people and other opportunities come your way, which is also really fantastic. So, yeah, I, um, I've i never been on a paid one yet yeah. <laughs> in that way. Like, I've never, no. No, I it's do. definitely about the experience sort of thing. I do know that um, there are a few that are paid, but it's very rare, and they are pretty big names. Um, I know Instagram, there's a lot of, there's some Instagram travel influencers, I would say, because yeah. it's more, and they will receive compensation as well as the trip to Instagram. Um, but yeah, the majority of everyone I've talked to, uh, the trip is kind of what you do and the way you make money off of it is typically through freelancing. So you might go to a trip and then you're selling it or Another thing that you'll use is if you write for another outlet, you can use them as um, leverage then to get on a trip as well. So I know a friend who just went to Costa Rica and it was for a freelance publication that she's with. Right. And um, so she was covering it for them. So you can get paid in that way. But I um, and I have received two opportunities through like ad networks that know that I'm a travel writer. And so it's like, Oh, if a hotel comes to them, then um, you can make money just kind of like a sponsored post. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's very rare. And I do not think that's a common thing. Um, most often everything I've received, it, you've got to figure out a way. And that's the big thing is figuring out a way to monetize until you become I mean, if you can get huge and you have this great influence or you've got a great voice somewhere, then yeah, you can probably start requesting money on top of it. But until that comes along, you're going on the trip and you've got to either advertise, like make it through what you're drawing in traffic or. So what do you whatever. think makes, and I know this is a totally subjective question, but what do you think makes some people huge? Is it voice? Is it photography? Is it. Um, How they wear a bikini? <laughs> hey, hey, if, I could, do if, I, if I could do that, I would. Hey, I did that at beaches. The whole like one of the Instagram posts. You're like, like you did your. Yeah. I know. If I did that, I would have lost a lot of followers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in a whole other search category. I know. I'm not worried about what my follower count would, what who I would end up with. But I was clear, so it was yeah. Good. 
<laughs> so we did have a question, like with the baby, who obviously has a baby. I would, I would guess. Uh, says, <laughs> not interested in traveling without her family. Is it bad to turn down ops that don't include family? Thoughts, anyone? I think it depends on. Well, I think it depends on what you want. I mean, the trip that I just did, I didn't take my family. I would have loved to, but then in the same breath, I had no time. Like I right. was working literally and did. Yeah. And even when you're tra traveling, because you've kind of got to record the experience and how you got there and that sort of thing, dependent on what sort of content you're creating out of it. So I understand the want to take the family, like that would have been amazing, but you it's not like going on a family trip. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, no. you're in these absolutely stunning locations, but it's itinerized from the moment you wake to the moment you go to bed. It's and you work, like yeah. working, It's kind of like working in an ice cream shop, right? Yeah. You look at people yeah. working in an ice cream shop, you're like, dude, you're working in an ice cream <laughs> shop. <laughs> you're you're ice cream 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 cream. Cream. You can eat ice cream all day long. Yes. The reality is unlimited. <laughs> you're working in an ice cream shop, and after a certain amount of time, you're just sick and tired of ice cream. Yeah. yeah. This right? summer, yeah. this summer, I took a vacation with my family. I didn't pitch anyone. I didn't ask for anything. We literally went away and had a vacation. Cause, yeah, and that's right. what I get so many friends, and I'm sure Paula knows this, is you have so many friends that go, oh, it must be nice to go on all these trips and all these vaca yeah. free vacations. Yeah. And like Paula says, no, like <laughs> you are working it. You, right. I, my, my, yeah. mom, my mom has a habit of saying, well, I know you're going on that vacation. I'm like, no, it's not. It's no. not a vacation. <laughs> yeah. And I think to the point of, and you can comment if you'd like, when it comes to, even if you are trying to position yourself as a family travel blogger, they're not necessarily interested in you showing your family going on a trip. They oh, want no. you to write about why this might be good for someone else's family or yes. someone with yeah. children. It's, it's yes. not necessarily like, look, my husband loved it. I loved it. It's and and to the point and, to, to the point of your um, the trips you were talking about. So um, having been in the travel industry, we used to call them fam trips. I don't know if they still yeah. call them that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It's a F F but it doesn't stand for family. It no, stands it stands for, for familiarization. Oh. See, I'm just throwing, oh. throwing out some of the lingo. You. Yeah, yeah, you're good. <laughs> um, but it was literally that, and and I've been on those types of trips as a, as a blogger as well, where you were like nonstop, nonstop, yeah. and and even my husband's yeah. like, I didn't hear from you at all today, well, because when yeah. I had a moment, I'm really just breathing, or you're catching up on your email, <laughs> or yeah. or no, you're doing do. laundry. I was doing or laundry at the Four <laughs> Seasons at eleven o'clock at night, so I had enough clothing for the next. That is day. so glamorous. That's nice. That's and very glamorous. So There's an image oh, for you. Dodging I was on them. a three week my three week trip, and I was doing laundry at the Extended yeah. Stay America. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was host, that was not hosted. Sorry, maybe yeah. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to also, this is really kind of what sparked the discussion this week. And, and I, again, it's life with the baby um, asked me on Twitter because last week we talked about blogging conferences and if they're worth your time and money. Mm -hmm. And she asked me about some of the travel conferences, the travel blogging, I, I'd say travel blogging and just travel conferences in general. Like I know there was just TBEX down in Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, which is, I was there, which is a big one. So I'd love to hear about that. And also um, so what kind of travel blogging conferences do you go to? Are they worthwhile for you? Is it mainly for the networking, which is what I've heard about TBEX? But I'd also like to hear about um, maybe conferences or other events that you attend that aren't specific to blogging. They're more specific to the travel industry. I can't <laughs> contribute to this because, being honest, I've never attended a travel conference. Um, I have attended conferences and they have sometimes led themselves to travel opportunities, but I've never come at it that way. So I can't, okay. you know what I mean? I can't say anything. Paula's just way. awesome on her own. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I have a lot of, no, trust me, trust me. There's a lot. But, um, yeah, I would be fascinated to do it now that I've kind of, I'm getting more into it sort of thing. I feel like I'd have a much better understanding and just even with the lingo and so forth with what you pick up. But no, I can't say because I've never done it. So, yeah. So I'll speak up to what I've done. So I've done a family, I've done two family travel conferences um, that are through TMS. And they do a showcase, which is they also um, it's kind of their largest one. And it's just travel brands in general. 
Then they have the family travel one. Then they have a summit, which is um, very, it's like 15 or 20 bloggers, I think, or writers, not even necessarily bloggers. That's another thing with the travel world is it's not all travel bloggers. There's photographers, there's like videographers. There's another, you know, world there with that. So um, the family travel conferences are good. I've, I've loved both opportunities. They're very small. I think there's about 50 of us um, attending and it's an invite only you can apply for it and then they invite you or not. And so that one's been good. It's more, I think based on now my second year, it's more about the opportunities that the destination that it's hosted at. So the one year I went, it was in Carlsbad this year it was in Kansas city. So it's an opportunity to reach out to that destination and, and share about that destination. So it's kind of like you're on a fam right. trip in a way. Um, and then you also have a bit of the conference where occasionally you might pick up a tip or pick up something. Once you've been in it for a while, I feel like a lot of the conferences, the, um, the courses that are taught are kind of not as helpful because you're already where you are. But every yeah. once in a while you get tips that are helpful. But yeah. it really comes down to the connection that you make with CVBs and brands that are there that are in the travel sphere. You're getting your business card in their hands. You're talking to them about their destination. It gives you a name in your Rolodex. So if you're ever going to go to Jefferson Parish, or I'm just throwing that one out there <laughs> because list. I'm laughing about it. <laughs> I'm going to keep speaking. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to make you... They, I'm gonna write Paris such a great, is going to be like the best hit spot in the like, next. I know, like who because knows? Like, like our traffic went, went through the roof. Oh, what's <laughs> the <laughs> um, I will say, I just went to San Juan. My San Juan Islands, my San Juan Island post went live today, so well, that's a good one. So you should have waved to me because I'm just north of that. Oh, I could have just waved. You could, you could see actually kayaking. wave. I was see <laughs> kayaking. I could see Vancouver Island from Lime Kiln State. Uh, well, I'm Salt Spring. Oh, so see, well, I'm literally I the Canadian like, version, the better uh, version of right. the oh. Island. <laughs> it's, it's all a big me. state to me up that. there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, and then so T, um, those darn Canadians. So see, yeah. Canadian Village Mama <laughs> mentioned TMAC. If you're a TMAC member, that's another way to connect, including their conference. What's TMAC? Someone yeah. school me. I don't know that one. I, oh, I don't know. Talk to us, a Canadian village mama. I'm assuming I know CBN there's something is Canadian. So I know how do you get stuff. invites to these invite only travel conferences? <laughs> Beaches <That's>... moms. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that one, that one, you go to social media on the sand and there's a, there a link at the bottom that says interested. Well, it's just really, first of all, getting on the interest list. Um, but you know, that one, that's not, it's not, it's far from free. That one. Yeah. yeah that one's not free. And Maybe neither is tent, right? Neither, neither is, is T-Vex. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. T-Vex you pay for and, um, I know there, so t -Bex is the one I just did in Fort Lauderdale. It was my first one ever. It is massive. And, um, but you have these speed dating times where you, yeah. Oh, oh, I guess it's called speed networking. I think of it as speed dating. <laughs> and that's what it's like. You get 10 minutes, but one minute is spent, two minutes are spent like in transition. Yeah. So you get eight yeah. minutes with the person. And, um, and you can send invitations to these places or they can invite you for a date. And, um, I mean a network. So anyways, yeah. so you fill up your day and then you just run around. The whole like a new chicken. kind of blogging now, right? No, it is an interesting format. Um, so we had a question about, um, social media on the sand. I've just, at least I thought yeah. I posted the link. Did yeah. I post the link. Just tell me more. I don't see it. Nope. All right. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Um, so I just posted a link to it. This is basically, um, I guess the best way to describe it is it is a conference, but it's really a sponsored conference by Beaches Resorts. Um, oh, now it's up there twice. They missed it the first time. <laughs> but it, it's, it's sponsored. And I put the website up there because there is a place on there to say if you're interested in uh, it's wine o'clock. If you're interested in <laughs> Sorry, in, wine o'clock, always in, in, in getting on the list and basically expressing interest in learning about um, opportunities that might be available, you can sign up on there. Um, I mean, I became aware it's it's organized by Maria Bailey, who does a lot with mom bloggers. So, and she's worked with the Disney social media um, moms, whatever it's called, 
sorry. sorry. But um, uh, uh, one thing I want to talk about too is, is airfare, airfare, right? Because my impression is that most of the time you may get lodging or you may get invited somewhere, but airfare isn't necessarily covered. What's been your experience? It varies. Oh, I thankfully have not had to pay for airfare because that, like the trip that I just did, I can't imagine if I had to just with all the stopping and going. Oh, I can. Thing. From Turks and oh. Caicos, I can tell oh. you, it, it ain't cheap. Wow. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. So that's, I mean, I think that's the part of it as well as there's always that investment part. Do you know, and like, and that's the perception again, where it's like, oh, you know what I mean? I mean, I had to pay for some stuff, but I was pretty lucky. But that's always something that I'm nervous by when you get offered certain things, because you do have to factor in cost, depending yeah. on what's being offered and what's not, right? And then what that's... Yeah. And like what that's going to mean. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Like where well, I imagine is. living near a major airport helps. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, Wait, why the laugh? Oh, because it takes Julie, me like five like hours to get to a major airport. They don't have <laughs> be like, have I know the conference the isn't for another four days, but I'm yeah. leaving now. So yeah. I'll see you guys soon. Yeah. And I still may be late because if the ferry doesn't That's come, right. you know, I just, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I get my kayak out and go. Yeah. I would oh. totally do that. And, yeah. and how about working with airlines in general? Because, again, the impression I get is that they're not really into working with social media influencers. What's been your experience? I, everything I've heard about airlines is it's their own little thing. So mm -hmm. I have not had any luck with getting any sort of compensation or deal or gift cards or anything. But I know some people do, like, ambassadorships, I think, with some. And some people go on trips for... Um, yeah. You know, like a friend just went to Costa Rica for Southwest to celebrate their inaugural flight. Damn, um, I want to get on God. that list. I know, but yeah. nothing else afterwards. Like they just got her down there and back. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they got her down there and said, good luck. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> There's luck here. Here. That way. No, Same I'm thing. Kidding. They were doing, uh, I think it was Virgin and they were doing that. What's the really fast jet? Oh, oh yeah. 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 Didn't, yeah. 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 Know. The Concorde, yeah, no, and they did a Concorde no, no. flight. No, it was. I'm pretty sure. I thought they said um, the there's Concords. no more Concorde. Uh, that's what I was like. I thought they were done. Yeah. Anyway, they went but from like Toronto some... to like Switzerland. Switzerland, yeah, yeah, and, and did, they yeah, flew two influencers out, and it's and then they turned around and flew them back. Came back, yeah. Well, I that remember a couple of years ago when Angry Birds was really popular. Trust me, I know how popular yeah. it was. Um, <laughs> this is a whole new conversation, right? <laughs> like, where are we going? Are we supposed to slingshot ourselves? <laughs> no, okay, no, let's bring hear. It up because I think it was Finn Air because it's made by a, a Finnish group. Finn Air did a cross promotion with Angry Birds where they were looking for like the biggest Angry Birds fan. They flew them over to, to Helsinki and then they flew them like to Singapore and back. It was so, and I know someone that was actually part of that. She was a cool. Wow. Yeah, it had to do with your yeah. social media following more than your travel. Yeah. But. Well, I was lucky enough to go on a trip with Tom Tom. And so I guess I am a travel That's blogger. Cool. Yeah. Oh, the they, GPS they, company. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they flew all five of us. So they had, we had five tickets and uh, two weeks in St. Lucia, all inclusive and cash. <laughs> See, I haven't wow. even gotten that kind of job. Yeah, right. So, well, and not just cash. Right. Cash, right? Ah. So, yeah. And we See. had to chart the island with Tom Tom. See, Julie yeah, needs cool. to just be talking. That's I, I need that job. My husband would love it. He loves getting lost. I yeah, that was, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> it's crazy because St. Lucia really doesn't have street signs and that kind of stuff. So, but we you really drive can't. around. But you really, I mean, as long as you don't go into the ocean, you're kind of good. Theoretically. Yeah, but there's places <laughs> you don't want to go in St. Lucia. Ah, uh, gotcha. So, so, let me ask a question about. So, oh. Okay. Oh, may I? No, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I just um, want to say something. I don't want to forget no, it. No, go so ahead. You just... go ahead then. No, it's good. You're good. Okay. <laughs> I'll go. Um, <laughs> about your perception in the industry, and I bring this up because I, I work in the auto industry quite a bit, and so I may go on press trips with other, you know, usually they're called lifestyle bloggers or lifestyle writers, and usually we're there separately from like the hardcore auto journalist, but sometimes the yeah. two of them coincide. And I don't know if you guys experience that as well. And 
if you play nicely or if there's any perception about like, oh, you're a blogger or t tell me about that. Oh, I think there's always like, I really respect the whole blogging industry because it's something that I'm getting into late, but you can see that hesitancy at times because I think it's just, again, lack of education. So people jump to a conclusion instead of really taking in like in anything, what that person's presenting and what they can do. So mm. I always go into these really open-minded, like the trip I just did, I experienced my first fam. So I was surrounded by uh, travel agents and I just found it fascinating, like their dynamic and the questions that they had and their concerns and stuff like this. And I like to look at it as like a learning curve because you come away understanding and having a different perception because you've been traveling with somebody else who's looking at it from a different way. So I think when you're able to bring groups together that are kind of coming at it, you know what I mean, with their own specialty, it should be a benefit. It should be something that you kind of look fondly upon. But I've also yeah. seen at times that that's not always the case. Yeah. Like there's a bit of like, oh, okay. You know, yeah. like, did you yeah. win the contest kind of thing instead uh, of respecting the facts? <clears throat> yeah. 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 I did a press trip with um, Bridgestone to Denver. Uh, see, I don't, maybe I am a travel blogger. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, we were Denver. there with a bunch of auto people. And they were great. They were yeah. fabulous. I mean, we kind of stood by because we're a bunch of silly, giggly, you know, we're, we're women and we're, we're a bit more creative potentially. Did um, you just say because we're women? Did you just say no. that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> silly women. Well, I mean, this, this is yeah, important. burn. That was bad. Okay. I, I, know, I know what you meant. I'm just giving you a hard time. You know what? I, but yeah, we were coming at it from a different way. We were Absolutely. like, cool, we're driving on ice. Right. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, and they were coming from this, well, what is the technical inch of this? I was like, <laughs> right. I don't Right. We're like, this is right? fun. Woo. Yeah. Let's do a donut. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but it was all, I was in a car uh, driving back to the airport with a gal who runs a large auto publication. I didn't really understand. And she was amazing. I mean, it was brilliant to hear what she built from her angle and to hear this media side and this journalist side and for her to hear my side of what I'm doing. And it was almost like, you know, uh, an architect and a painter, an artist talking together right like that was what it was for me she had this whole different uh, entry into the industry than I did right. um, and it was really interesting to hear her perspective and, and hear her view on things too so well you know yeah. the other thing that always shuts people up right away is when you know they work for a publication they're being paid to be there and you're not so yeah. Uh, yeah they're kind of like oh okay never mind that yeah right. um it, so it, the last which is why we steal the donuts right <laughs> that's right <laughs> So my last big question, and then whoever else has anything that they want to uh, mention, whether you're you you're you've stuck with us for this um, broadcast um, or you've just joined us, is what advice would you give to someone interested in travel blogging? And I say this because, and I'm sure you've noticed it too, that people that have been in this for a while, all of a sudden I'm noticing that they're changing their monikers and they're changing their Twitter bios and all of a sudden they're a travel blogger. Yes. Um, I mean, is it a simple... But you just hashtag that and it happens, is it, right? Is it simple <laughs> saying I'm a travel blogger and you know, if you build it, they will come? What, what would be I your think advice? I think uh, it's, I'm, I'll, I'll chime in because I, I see this very much because I, when I started and I added in the lifestyle side, but I had formed this group of travel writers who are travel writers. And it's kind of funny how they look at lifestyle bloggers who sit there and say that they're travel bloggers all of a sudden just because they went on a trip. And um, so there is a definitely, I think, a difference there with you can't just say you're a travel blogger just because you take trips. There's a there's a storyline and there's a method to the badness. And I think that's where sometimes lifestyle bloggers get into trouble is they sit there and go, okay, well, our family arrived on this day and then we checked into the hotel. Then we went to dinner. Next, we got up and played putt-putt golf. Here's my kids doing all of these activities each step. And it's like, okay, that's great. And if you're, if you have this lifestyle following who wants to follow what your family's doing, like a reality sort of thing, then that's good. But I think to do a um, travel, to be a travel blogger, you have to be thinking of what is the goal of the destination? 
Mm. What is your storyline? How are you going to sell that destination to your readers? How do they fit? You know, like you were saying, Julie, on wanting to do luxury travel. There are so many people who are like, oh, yeah, I want to do luxury travel. I mean, I was at a recent conference. I was just kidding. I, I was totally No, kidding. I know. I'm just saying. No, <laughs> I'm not. But I'm, just, I'm not because that's what happens. And that's what I'm trying to say is that. So, um, I mean, everybody wants to do that, but it's like, well, that wouldn't come naturally to me. No, you're fine. Okay. But, um, I mean. Okay, I will do luxury I, travel, though. Somebody I, wanted I, me I, to I, do it. Three chickens I would boat. do it. Luxury travel. Luxury water. travel. Okay, so right. I think I told you this, didn't I, Phaedra, that there was recently at an event I was at um, a person who did, like, couponing, blogging, and trying to pitch a five-star resort about getting her family to come there and um if it's and on so, sale it's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, and that's and life with baby there's nothing that says you can't have a travel aspect she just said you know she should stick to lifestyle blogging there's nothing that says you cannot have a travel aspect because your readers and your followers would love to watch where you're going on vacation yeah. it's just a matter of how are you monetizing that what's the purpose of that and then yeah. maybe it's like okay we're going on a trip because if you're doing travel blogging very rarely and I don't know if Paul has had this am I offered sometimes you get a plus one um because they can get a yeah. double room just as easily as they can get a single bed but other than that and <laughs> you're on your you know, own you're on your own and yeah. so you're either paying to bring your family along and you work while they go have their yeah. own adventure because you do not see each other right no, yeah. it does not work that way. So I think it's important that if you want to get in, if you're going to be a lifestyle blogger or if you're a blogger who wants to do travel blogging, you understand what is travel blogging, what's your voice in the niche, how are you selling a destination to your readers, where is the fit for that? Yeah. And so that's my advice. Sorry. No, and I think that's true for any niche of blogging, yeah. right? You've got yeah. to have a purpose if you're now starting to start working with brands. Right. It's not just blah. No. You've got to yeah. have a purpose and understand that the goal that they want uh, and how to deliver results to that goal. Absolutely. So I like yeah. Yeah. not to oh, go ahead. Sorry, not to interrupt. I think because I'm kind of new to it, like I wouldn't classify myself yet as a travel blogger. I would like to get into that more so. But to me, like I said before, it's a curve that I'm on. So it's like I'm trying to build up content experience language and then also to understand what is my voice in all of this before mm -hmm. titling mm -hmm. myself so again if you've already started with the niche I think that's fantastic and I think evolution is definitely part of that but I do get props. wary of somebody really quickly like starts trying to grab all okay. these titles yeah because yeah, then I'm just like it's like when you see people's profiles and they say you know they live between Paris and Toronto and you're like <laughs> Okay. In the middle of the ocean, <laughs> or like Nova Scotia. I think it's like Paris, Texas. And they live in Nova Scotia, right? <laughs> so good. So I'd like to um, mention what Frugal Web Guy said about voice is so important. And I think um, life with a baby, maybe you're kind of in the same boat I am. So my blog is all things Phaedra at all things Phaedra.com. And I started, I started out basically <laughs> endless. So I'm like, I'm just going to write about whatever I want to write about. And it happened to be a little bit of everything. Because, but, but what's helped me is my voice is pretty consistent throughout. So whether I'm talking yeah. about technology or whether I'm talking about travel, it's me. I'm, you know, I say I'm the star of my own show, not because I love myself, but because um, people... But you do love yourself. Uh, and that's I'm, important, I'm all right. too. I'm all right. She's lovable. Uh, but, but, you know, what I would, what I would say is you can definitely make travel part of your blog, which is what I've done on mine. It's honestly, I don't have the time to make it a full-time career. If you look at someone like Carol mm -hmm. Payne from, yeah. um, what's her blog? Girls Gone. No. Girl Gone Travel. Girl Gone Travel. I mean, she is gone all the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah. But there's an interesting thing about Carol and talking about voice. I've been following her for a while and, um, and maybe uh, it just seems even recently she's really come upon a new voice for her stories. And she is so, I mean, she's bringing so much more to the table, even over the past two years from when I first started following her. So it's interesting to see how that can happen that, mm. you know, as you do, your world impacts you too. So as you are a traveler, you know, like I'm family travel now, but eventually my kids are going to be grown up and I need yeah. to figure out a way that, Hopefully my readers will move with me through that transition or I'll, my voice might change and I might have new, re whatever the case may be. But I think it's, yeah, sorry. That was it. 
All right, well, Carol, okay. we, yes. we, we, were, we were not there. <laughs> so we did not plan to run this long this week. Obviously, we had some technical issues in the beginning. We got about five, <laughs> yeah. five minutes. Uh, no, that's not you, Paula. We had, that's not you, Paula. We had other that's issues you, as well. No, I'm just trying. That's rare. That wasn't directed yeah. at you. I, I figured out why I had the echo. I won't tell you why, because it was definitely user error. Um, but Why did you have the echo? Because I also had my blog open that had the embedded blab on there so it was like oh, uh, brought, yeah I know I didn't want to but that's good <laughs> we're learning it's all about learning now I, right now I sound oh. stupid so in the in the last five minutes if anybody has like any wrap up or any burning question or anything let's go for it or te or tell yeah. me what your next Ask trip is that you've got going on well I have a question yes oh. Julie. Oh, uh, uh, what <laughs> actually are brands or destinations looking for? What are the results they want? So when you like, I mean, I know I get copy and they say, do this, do this, do this. We get mandatories. What do you guys get? What are, what are they actually looking for? For me, the Nevis component is just to, because they're completely dependent on uh, tourism. So it's just to increase awareness make sure because there's a huge misconception that it's hard to get to, which it's not. So even just to kind of but like, did you just say <laughs> what? <laughs> it wasn't hard to get to. It was just, like, was not my flight it was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then the other two were about the places that I was staying. So just to kind of like push, right. Yeah. the uh Pacific. the hotels themselves and the specifics and what you get and you know what I mean like kind of traveling and almost geo mapping the grounds kind of in a from a photography standpoint sort of thing which was kind mm -hmm. of fun so those kind of are, seem to be the two components the two and angles is, that I get most often so is your audience tolerant of like you've gone and you've got this hotel and you've got and maybe they're gorgeous photos but are, are do you ever sense that they're like oh god here we go again with her <laughs> trip and uh I try to be because thinking of that myself like I always try to put myself in the viewer's shoes because I don't want to do that. I don't want it to be like, here it is again. Do you know what I mean? Or try to become Don't look formulaic. at my Instagram feed from beaches. <laughs> <laughs> Saturated. <laughs> but see, here's where it shows who you're attracting because I actually gained tons uh, from that beaches event. I gained tons. Oh, so awesome. that, that was yeah. good for me. I was like, man, my readers want me posting eight times a day. That never happened. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. They're all sitting in offices freezing, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, That's they're like, like, oh, oh, they're like, I hate you, but I love you. I would be. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. do get those envious. That is a big thing. Like with travel blogging, you'll oh. get the people that'll be like, I haven't been able to take a trip because whatever. I, I, so you get a lot of those. I don't know if you've had that, Paula. So. Yeah. But yeah. What were we? Oh, Julie, you were asking um, about what they're looking for. Um, I think they definitely are looking for an exposure to your audience. They just yeah. want their destination covered. The interesting thing about travel blogging is most of the time, it's not like what you have as a normal campaign. You're not, sometimes you're given a hashtag, but not always. Um, and you, I mean, you're given hashtags for like the CVB or the city in general. And it's just kind of share what you're doing. There's no preconceived things. I think if you were being paid, maybe it would be like, oh, you're going to produce X number of Instagrams or you're going to produce X yeah. number of blog posts, things like that, where you get a little bit more specific. But really, I was I just did a big post for a trip I was on and I worked really hard on it. I just sent it to her and she was just so happy. She had told mm -hmm. me earlier that somebody they they had a trip last year and they didn't write anything. Like oh, nothing, that nothing at all. The whole trip. Uh, I've heard and, of that happening. Yes. And they, you know, those are, it's a lot of money. And then also it's good for the companies where I link to them or I talked about who, because those people hosted or yeah. they provided a service. So all that works. They're just looking to get exposure in yeah. the market to more people who are interested in travel right. so that maybe the right. next time they're thinking of taking a trip, they'll go, oh, remember that place that we saw, the awesome kayaking? Yeah. Well, yeah, I yeah. could talk about travel honestly for another hour. I, but I don't think I don't think we'd keep our audience for that long. So I, would <laughs> I feel like, like I talked too long. Sorry. Thank, no, thank you so much, 
Oh, wait, there's one last question from Life with Baby. How do you get paid to be a travel writer? Freelance, right? You yep. don't. Well, I think, I think that, yeah. Not unless you're huge and you can start leveraging that. And I think that there are people out there. I think I'm guessing Carol Kane gets paid. So if you are Carol Kane, then you're set. Um, you but no, paid. I'm just kidding. Or by, or by leveraging or, or building sponsorship opportunities. Yes, I think with ambassadorships, the location, things yourself. like that. I yeah. know some people get ambassadorships, like hotels, different right. things like that. Hilton I don't think program. you can. The big thing is I don't think you can make an, a, a big career unless you're selling freelance or like even if. Yeah. I, I'm, so it's I'm be making my own products. I'm I making my own products. Well. Yeah, there you go. Mary, what was what was that? Find a rich guy. She's saying be a gold digger. I'm just kidding. Mary, <laughs> Mary well. And um, yeah, Mary. So thank you, Kimberly from stuffcase.com and Paula from paulacm.com. Did I thank you? Yeah, no, no. Thank you so definitely. much, um, Phaedra and Julie. will yeah. be back. Next week, you next, you want to tell Julie what we're going to talk about next oh, week? Oh, yeah, we're talking, <gasps> dun, 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 we're talking YouTube. Oh, nice. Oh, I met a yeah. last YouTuber today. No, but wait, we've got, now, do you have your guest confirmed, Phaedra? I, yeah, she said yes, she would do it. I feel like the, yes. the T's aren't crossed and the I's aren't oh, dotted, but I'm, well, oh. but if we announce nice. it, that might be enough to say, <laughs> yeah, you're that. booked. Oh. So I, I'm super excited. I've invited uh, David Delport of My Life Suckers. So Dave oh, nice. is the one that does all of those awesome yeah. uh, mom parody videos. Yeah. And oh, she nice. became an internet sensation or like a YouTube sensation. She is fully monetized on YouTube. And she's going to kind of walk us through her strategy and what she's doing to A, do great videos, um, and B, build a career out of it. Cool. Awesome. And, and Fagel. And I've invited Jesse Sanfilippo, known as Sugalippo. I think <laughs> kind of is one of my, like, she's my fangirl. I've got to oh, tell you, I get a bit like. I love, so, like, I just, yeah. she's the only person I could just sit there with drool running down as I watch her videos. Yeah. So she's great. <laughs> yeah. And she, she gave me a yes exclamation point that she would join us. So I'm going to take that. As awesome. a yes. So it's going to be nice. a great. Good. And it's going to be, I think, a super fun discussion next week with no technical issues <laughs> None. not a, not at all no, no technical so issues. if you've got questions for uh deva or jesse or phaedra or myself uh between now and next week be sure to tweet them to us at julie noel and at all things phaedra mm -hmm. uh, and then join us next week same time same place and we're going to break down youtube without technical difficulties nice <laughs> thanks everybody See you